And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Sunday, August 4th, 2024. And if you'd like additional weather information on top of what I provide in this YouTube video, you can go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. And if you come to this map here of the continental US, you have a Hawaii and Alaska to the lower left and tabs for the territories. If you point and click anywhere on this map, it'll give you a very specific forecast. Uh, that include relevant watches, warnings, and advisories for any location in the nation. Most importantly, on this Sunday afternoon, we have Tropical Storm Debbie that will become Hurricane Debbie tonight into Monday morning. We expect rapid intensification. The hurricane's off the west coast of Florida, coming into the, the Big Bend area there of Florida, and then working its way across southern Georgia. This system uh, will have the potential of producing uh, category one to maybe low end category two winds as it comes into uh, the Florida Panhandle. But as the moves inland, there could be some torrential rain. Places like Savannah, Georgia could get 15 to 20 inches of rainfall, perhaps record setting rainfall there in the Southeast US. Further west, fire danger across areas of Western Nebraska, Wyoming into Idaho. We have excessive heat in the Southwest. Uh, areas like Death Valley and uh, Las Vegas dealing with triple digit heat and ongoing situation this summer. Very active weather here in Alaska. Now I was telling you about the potential release. We were waiting for the Suicide Basin uh, Glacier Dam to release. It has done so as of late this Sunday morning. So the forecast office in Juneau has issued a flood warning for Mendenhall Lake and River there above Juneau uh, through uh, 4 p.m. Tuesday afternoon, and we are anticipating major flooding uh, similar to what happened last year in 2023. I'll highlight details of that coming up. Intervals of wind and rain with high surf will continue along the west coast uh, tonight into Monday, and areas uh, um, along the Seward Peninsula could see some heavier rainfall. There are flood watches in effect for the interior there of the Seward Peninsula for minor flooding of rivers and creeks. Uh, Kodiak Island, Kodiak City, and then the eastern Kenai, including uh, Seward, as well as areas surrounding western and northern Prince William Sound, will be picking up three to six inches of rainfall uh, starting Monday through the middle of the week. Meanwhile, we continue to see very warm temperatures, eastern uh, interior, down into the Panhandle. There have been temperatures in the 80s. Those readings in the 80s will continue across the eastern interior, which will cause fire danger to be rising throughout the early through mid part of this week. So looking at a couple of the FAA webcams, new exit, mostly cloudy. 69 was at two o'clock this afternoon. We are seeing readings now in the low 70s. They are very warm temperatures along the Arctic coast with this warm ridge of high pressure over the eastern half of the mainland. Golovin there in Norton Sound, rain, wind and fog. Uh, areas above uh, Golovin and Nome, uh, you can get the highlands above there, gonna get some heavier rainfall, maybe as much as an inch and a half to three and a half inches of rain through Wednesday. So as a result, there could be minor flooding of rivers and creeks and some of those rural roads experiencing some washouts. Kodiak fog as of this Sunday afternoon, but heavy rain will be moving in and really picking up for Monday and Tuesday and uh, lingering perhaps into Thursday, especially up there through Seward and Prince William Sound. Juneau is enjoying sunshine, temperatures up near 80 degrees. Haines and Skagway have seen temperatures up around 83, 84 this Sunday afternoon for very warm conditions. But here's the current uh, watch advisory warning map and of most important concern is the flood warning here in the Juneau vicinity for Mendenhall Lake and River because of that glacier dam release. We also have high surf advisors here along the west coast through uh, 6 a.m. Monday due to strong southerly winds uh, enhancing the surf height there, especially at high tide. We have the flood watch for the interior of the Seward Peninsula that's in effect until uh, Wednesday, where I said uh, inch and a half to three and a half inches of rain could call a fall causing minor flooding of creeks and rivers. Uh, we also have potential for some heavy rain here, even up along the southwest slopes of the Brooks Range. And we've had some stronger winds up around Anatovic and Attigan Passes, southerly gap winds this Sunday afternoon and evening, uh, gusting upwards of uh, 40, 45 miles an hour. But here we have a, a wind advisory for the Alaska Range uh, for Monday into Wednesday. Uh, strong southeast to south winds could gust as high as 60 miles an hour. 
And then again, let's move right on to what we're talking about here with uh, the release from Suicide Basin. So here's the Mendenhall Glacier. Juneau is down here. This glacier, the Mendenhall Glacier, provides a ice dam, melting water, collects in this basin, and then it releases. That release has happened. Once that happens, the Juneau Forecast Office issues a flood warning for Mendenhall Lake and then Mendenhall River as it works its way down. And of course, this is the area of Juneau. And unfortunately, we're anticipating uh, water levels, the flood levels from this uh, time around to be similar to last year's catastrophic flood. Now, this is how uh, that suicide basin look uh, earlier uh, this morning in the late morning hours as it was releasing. So you can see the, the water is contained underneath this ice and that reaches a critical point where enough mass builds up, you get the melting and the, the pressures that just allow it to finally break through and release. And as a result, there was a flood warning on the Mendenhall Lake and River through four o'clock Tuesday. And we expect the river to crest at 15 feet, very similar to the record high level last year. And the crest is expected to occur sometime late Monday night into early Tuesday morning, preliminary estimate around 4 a.m. Tuesday. So those of you who live along Mendenhall Lake and the Mendenhall River, you have some time to take action to safeguard property and certainly your personal safety. The only good thing about this is there's a little more time to prepare for the rising water levels, but nevertheless, hopefully it's not quite as catastrophic as last year's flood event. But be, uh, stay tuned to the latest information. You can go to the National Weather Service uh, website there for the Juneau Forecast Office, and it'll have very specific information on impacted areas and what is anticipated. The other thing with the warm temperatures here over the eastern mainland along the Elkan border, we've seen the fire danger creep up, as I promised. We've had high temperatures, Yukon Flats, Upper Tanana Valley, uh, even around uh, areas of the Copper River Basin, and parts of the northern panhandle have had temperatures this Sunday afternoon in the 80s. And that will likely continue in the eastern interior along the Elkan border through early this this week. Uh, temperatures are going to be the 80s. We've even had temperatures getting into the 70s along the Arctic coast like I was talking about. So we have the ridge of high pressure here. That's what's providing the drier, warmer temperatures over the southeastern portion and the uh, all the way up to the north. But to the west is where the active weather pattern is. We have low pressures coming up out of the North Pacific. We have them working their way across the Bering Sea. There's a kind of a one-two punch system that we'll highlight here after I Put the map, uh, turn that off, but he, there's another system pulling moisture that's going to come up across Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, then that's going to lift up across the southwest interior along the west coast as we go through early in the week. Meanwhile, we have the one system that's already bringing uh, wind and rain to those areas, so very active for the west side and southwest quadrant of the state. Here's the high pressure ridge at the surface. You can see the clearer skies here over the eastern half of the mainland. That's why temperatures up this way are, are flirting with 80. Uh, and, and then as we go west, plenty of cloud cover. We have this one system uh, down here to the south that's gonna link and lift northward. This one's gonna continue tracking uh, off to the east northeast. And by the time we get into late tonight, early on Monday, the ridge still holding, but not as strong as over the weekend. The mid-level and upper-level ridge uh, is going to shift a little more eastward as we go through the early and middle part of the week and be located right here through northwest Canada. So it's going to keep the warmest temperatures along the Elkan border, far eastern interior, down into parts of the Panhandle, though I think temperatures will moderate a little bit over the Panhandle. And then we have this low coming north, feeding more moisture in across Kodiak Island, Lower Cook Inlet, Alaska Peninsula, that's going to get pulled in across the southwest interior. Then this low uh, is going to help funnel moisture up along the west coast. Monday afternoon, here comes that secondary low. So that's when the heavier rains are going to get going here. Kodiak Island spreading up along the eastern Kenai. And then by the time we get into Tuesday, rain continues to lift gradually northward up along the Kenai Peninsula into the western part of Prince William Sound. Could be a very rainy period there through midweek, Wednesday into Thursday lasting in this region. So this will be a prolonged rain event here for this area of the Western Gulf, especially along the coast. And then meanwhile, the west side of the state stays wet and things will still be relatively dry and through the Panhandle and along the Eastern mainland, especially the Alcan border. But uh, as I said, the, the pattern, the ridge won't be quite as in, influencing westward as it was, as it pushes back into northwest Canada. Lows tonight, generally above 50 in the panhandle. 
Even uh, Glen Allen will be down near 50 with temperatures up near 80 Monday afternoon. We have temperatures, look at these, look at these readings, lower panhandle, Metlakatla, uh, Craig, Klawak, on up through Juneau, uh, Skagway could see temperatures in the, at least lower 80s, maybe in a few uh, temperatures of mid 80s. Near 80, uh, as I said, up there at uh, Glen Allen, 76, Talkeetna. Uh, Anchorage Bowl area could get up uh, into the low 70s. And then temperatures Tuesday morning, generally in the 50s throughout the southeast and south central for mild temperatures. But on Tuesday, we're going to see more in the way of cloud uh, spreading northward and the rain working its way up along the Kenai. So it's going to cool things down. Highs mainly in the 60s. But look at this, still some potential for 80 degree readings. Southern Panhandle up around Juneau. As I mentioned, again, that Mendenhall uh, Lake and River flood warning is in effect through 4 p.m. Tuesday afternoon until that crest works its way downstream. And looking here at the interior, these are mild temperatures. Look at this, above 50 in many spots, a few 40s, maybe Utkiadvik, western portion of the Seward Peninsula out over St. Lawrence Island, but everybody else above 50. Temperatures are going to be in the 80s. It could be a few degrees warmer this in the normal hot spots. But uh, low mid 80s, common Fairbanks, Yukon Flats, Eagle, Northway, even 70 again up there around New Exit and Dead Horse, 60 potentially there at uh, Shishmaraf. And then for Tuesday morning, lows again generally above 50 in many spots, with the exception of maybe along the northwest Arctic coast from Utkiadvik down to Point Hope. And then again 44 or so at Savunga. But temperatures Tuesday afternoon, quite warm, mid to even upper 80s along the Alcan border, Yukon Flats, 87 at Eagle, 86 at Fort Yukon, 85 at Northway, 74 all the way up there at Dead Horse, 70 at Kaktovik. As we go further west, readings cool, it's wet, rainy across this region. And for the southwest interior, lows tonight generally ab above 50, extending out into the eastern Aleutians. Notice temperatures, though, not nearly as warm as even the far northeast or eastern mainland. We're only expecting highs, uh, upper 50s to low 60s at best, upper 50s along the Alaska Peninsula. Lows, not much lower, generally uh, maybe some upper 40s, Macquarie 47, 47 around Dutch Harbor, but otherwise lows generally at or above 50. And similar temperatures with the cloud cover and intervals of rain. We only expect highs, temperatures in the 50s to lower 60s at best extending all through the southwest and down along the Alaska Peninsula. The same areas we've been saying pretty much since winter. This region of the state has really had below normal temperatures. And again, the focus of that coming up August 10th through the 14th, leading up to mid-month. Guess where that is? Focus on Dillingham, uh, Kodiak City, Lower Cook Inlet, the west arm of the Alaska Range is where the best chance of below normal temperatures will be due to cloud cover and occasional periods of rain. Meanwhile, the panhandle is going to see above normal temperatures with perhaps much above normal temperatures. Southern panhandle around Ketchikan, Klawak and Craig, and even a sliver of it extending uh, above normal temperatures there, Arctic Village to Kaktovik. Precipitation wise, we expect drier conditions across the panhandle with that kind of pattern that would imply the uh, ridge of high pressure will hold here through western Canada, allowing this area of the state to be drier and warmer. Meanwhile, the west side of the mainland including the Alaska Peninsula, still has the potential to see precipitation to average above normal August 10th through the 14th.